How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be creating this abstract text design. You can animate it. You can just do a still render, have some fun with it. I was inspired by this piece I found right here on Instagram. So I wanted to make something fairly similar to it. I didn't want to copy it exactly, uh, but have some fun with that. So we're going to get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of 200 ready to use procedural materials compatible with both EV and Cycles. Speeding up your workflow is important and with an easy system to apply and edit materials, you will be able to bring your renders to life a lot quicker. Change the roughness, details, and color of any material you want. There is a growing list of categories like wood materials, detailed paints, and some really awesome metallic materials. They are 100% procedural so everything is editable, giving you control of how you want your design to look. All updates are free upon purchasing, so head over to duckey3d.com and check it out. All right, so we are here in just the default Blender scene. We're using Blender 3.0, but everything here is um, should work in older versions as well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit Shift A. And uh, first we're gonna make our text. We need to make the text first. So I'm gonna go here to text. Now generally you'd make the text in something like Photoshop, anything like that. But I know not a lot of Blender users use Photoshop. So we're gonna just do it here in Blender. So I'm gonna hit tab and then I like all caps. You can type whatever you want. And then I'm just gonna go ahead, type that three times. And then I'm gonna hit Alt D to make an instance of this. All right, now we need to go ahead and pick a font. So I'm gonna click on the text, hit the A, and then right down here, you're gonna see font. Click that little file, it should bring you a dialogue of just a bunch of your fonts. I'm gonna pick a bold one. Um, so we're gonna go with that. So now what we're gonna do here is get a emission material on this text. Since I did Alt D, you just need to add the material to one. So I'm gonna click new, and then here, I'm gonna go here from principle to emission, and then just make that nice and bright. <clears throat> So I'm going to hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key. Actually, we need to go to the front, actually, no, the top top view. I'm going to go to the camera and then just go to go ahead and bring it up and then snap that, hitting zero to snap it to view. And hit G and middle click. So I'm going to do that. That looks about right what I want. So we're just trying to put text on it. Doesn't even need to be readable, depending on what you're trying to do just aesthetically or just trying to have some fun. So we'll go here to the EV preview, make sure you're using EV, and we're gonna get our world brightness to black. We're not gonna use transparent because this is just, we're gonna use this as a mask in the texturing. And then here on the camera icon, I mean the printer icon, put 200 right there. That's gonna give you a 4K render since we're using EV, your, your computer should be able to handle it nice. So let's hit the render button, and there we go, there's our 4K text. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that and call this 4K TEXT. I'm gonna save this to my desktop. So now we're done with the text. If you wanna edit it later, you can. Start a new file, you can. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this and make my world brightness back up to gray because we're gonna want that later. So let's go ahead and start making the text on those planes. So go ahead and hit mesh plane, hit RX 90, just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and shape this. So here, I'm just gonna manually shape it. I know some people don't like that, but that's all right. And then I'm gonna hit Control A, apply scale. Now I'm gonna hit Tab to go to edit mode and go here to loop cut. I click on the loop cut and then right down here, I'm just gonna add a couple more. And then here in the middle, I'm gonna add two more. I want square faces. And then now that we have that, I'm just gonna hit A in tab mode, right click, subdivide, Maybe we'll click it one more time. Make it nice and dense because we are going to be animating this. So we want it nice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift D on this and then just go ahead and make four duplicates of this thing. And you can make them relatively even just like that. And the reason why I'm not using an array modifier is because these are going to animate individually. Uh, the array modifier would make them all animate at the same time and we want that control. I'm just gonna move this up, delete my camera up there. Okay, so let's go, now let's go ahead and apply that texture. So here in the scene, I'm just gonna go to the material preview, click on this little icon here, click new. Now we have material 002, I'm gonna hit A, and then control L to link and click materials. And now every one of these objects has the same material on it. 
So let's go here to shading. Now we have that. I'm gonna hit the tilde key and click front. So now, because we want this to be as flat as possible for our projection mapping, or I think that's what it's called, <laughs> projection mapping. Sometimes I blank out. So make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. You go to preferences here, and then right here on add-ons, type in Node, Node Wrangler, click the little check mark on that. And what we're gonna do is just clicking on one of these objects, hit Control T. And then I'm gonna hit G to move this up, just like that. And then here on my desktop, I'm gonna look up 4K, 4K text, just like that. And it looks awful. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and get all four of these. I'm gonna hit Tab. Make sure you hit A just to make sure everything is selected. I'm gonna hit U to unwrap and click Project from View. So if you like that, which I don't, you can leave it, but if you wanna edit your projection, go here to UV editing, highlight all of your UVs, and then just hit S to scale them up, to have it fit this text section, and then go back here to shading, and there we go. The text is evenly placed around however you want it to do. You can even go here to the UV editing and um, making sure everything is selected here. We'll go back to shading. Hitting tab, we'll go, you can even go back to UV editing and move it around. I'm hitting G if you want. Um, I'm gonna leave it because I like it. So here we go. This is what we have. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add a solidify to this object here. Add modifier, solidify, and make it a little bit thicker. And we are going to go ahead and bevel it give it a nice, uh, give it maybe four segments on the bevel, make sure it's nicely beveled here, something like this. Right click, shade smooth. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my displacement. So also, which is the place, displacement plugin, I have to go to the top. So add modifier, displace, and then drag your displacement up here to the top, just like that. I'm gonna click new, click the little texture button, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick clouds depth down to zero, get my scale up. So it kind of, it'll animate like a flag. And then we're gonna wanna be able to control this um, displacement. So we'll go back to our modifiers, hit Shift A, get it empty, get a plane axis, and just leave it there. It's gonna be down here. I'm gonna hit G and just remove it to the middle. Click back on that object. So right here on the displacement modifier, go from local to object, and then on the object, click that empty. So now when you click on the empty here, let's see if we'll just get it in the outliner. You'll hit R twice, and now you can control the displacement. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this, and then hold down Shift. Actually, no, I'm gonna click on this one, hold down Shift, click, click, and then the last one is this one, Control L, and we'll copy modifiers. And I'm also just gonna shade smooth these guys, and now they all have the same modifier on them. So when we hit that, hit R twice on that empty, they're all gonna animate, but I have one issue, and this is just sort of a stylistic issue. If you're happy with this, you can just leave it. But I want these to animate differently, each of them. I don't want them to all have the same texture on them. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna click on one of these objects, go here to the modifiers, and I'm gonna click that number four, just like that. And let's say we'll do negative one. So now if we play with that, it's still gonna do the same thing. So what I'm gonna do here is click on the texture, and here on Blender Original, we'll go here to Improved Perlin, and then we'll go ahead and check out that animation. So it's going to look differently. So now you can see this top one and this bottom one animating slightly differently than the other. Now this one, we'll go here back to the modifier, click that number three, so we'll make a duplicate. I'm gonna go from Clouds to Musgrave. And then, see on the colors, it's a little bit too contrasted. So we'll just do something like this. And then it will just go ahead and test that out on the empty. Cool, now it's not quite as dramatic. So we can go ahead and bring up the scale of the displacement on that one. Just have some fun. And on this last one, do the same thing. Click the two, go here, go from clouds to maybe distorted noise. And again, bring that contrast up so it's not too wild. And click on that empty. And now when we hit R twice, everything animates just a little different than each other. And that's what I want, just these subtle differences. The uh, My reference was a lot more obvious on the difference, and they use more of like the wave modifier for that, which you can definitely do. I wanted to do with uh, animate it with displacement. So now let's go back to the shading, which we're already in, and then let's use this texture as a mask. So take this off, 
I'm going to go ahead and get a mix shader. Plug that there. And then we're going to get this principle to hit shift D on it. And we're going to make the base color black. So we'll put this principle right into there. And then here on the 4K text image, just plug the color straight into the factor. So now it's inverted. So I'll just go ahead and switch the principle here. So here we go. And the reason why we did that is so we can have some control here. So on the black, bring that roughness down um, as far as you want. Something like this, bring the roughness down on the text. There we go. Now we have this nice piece. Let's go ahead and light and shade it and animate it. So here in the plane, I'm going to hit S8, maybe even bigger, Control A and apply that scale. On the camera, Shift A camera, then I'm going to do Control Alt 0, snap that to view. While we're still in the camera settings, I'm going to go here from perspective to orthographic. Play with that orthographic scale. I'm going to hit G to move it around. Orthographic is a fun way to kind of get a camera camera angle if you're having trouble with your camera angle. I'm going to re render this in cycles. I like the way it looks in cycles, but you can use EV if you like. I'm going to click on the render button and then uh, actually before we do that here on my uh, viewport samples, I'm going to do 32. On my max samples, I'm going to do uh, 300 in my uh, settings here just so that video doesn't lag. And then let's start lighting this. Light, area light. Bring that up, bring that up here, scale it, bring it up a little bit farther. And then we'll go ahead and bring that power just bright enough. And then I'm gonna do it a uh, shift D. I'm gonna hit R, R twice to just kind of point it. I hit zero to go back to my camera view. And in terms of lighting, let's just keep it super simple, just like this. So if we go ahead and render that out, see how it looks. So this is how it's looking as the render. There's some little fragments and things around there that you can fix here with some subdivision. So you can see how it's kind of ugly right there. You can just go to each individual one here and add in a subdivision surface. So subdivision surface here, and then bring that right above the bevel. And then we'll do the same thing. So we'll go ahead, add subdivision surface to each of them and again, place that modifier right above the bevel, and that's going to fix all your weird um, visual effects. So if we go here to the, the render view, now we can see a really nice animation, or a really nice render. If you want to animate it in a loop, I'm going to keep it here at 250 frames. Here in the empty, you just render it, I mean you animate one of the rotations. So what you can do, we'll go back, back here to zero, Click the keyframe, go to end the frame 250, or you can give it more or less. 360 on the rotation to make it a loop. And now, if we go here to the camera view, even the EV view here, you're going to have a nice, weird looking, but very interesting looking text animation. And that's pretty much how it goes. If you want to animate, if you want to render this out, You'll go here to the printer icon, pick your resolution right here, pick where you want to save it, either do a PNG sequence or just compile it all yourself on encoding. Go to FFmpeg video, encoding, go to MP4, output quality, perceptually lossless, render, render animation, and you'll be done. So there you guys go. That's how you make this weird kind of text animation. Oh, oh, my cat is falling out of my lap. Say hi. Um... <laughs> But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, again, if you want to check out real-time materials, that is in the description, and I will see you in the next tutorial.